Okay, perfect. Okay. Well, we are very pleased to have Dr. Mata, which um, has come from Full Sail University to talk to us today. So take it away. Thank All you right. so much. So thank you for inviting us to join you today. Um, it's been a rough ride for the last two years, hasn't it? Thank you for all libraries. Um, I wanted to share with you some of the things that we've been doing to support students during library closures, not just the pandemic. Um, but, you know, Florida, we have some of that strange weather that happens. We have a lot of power outages. We have a few hurricanes. And academics has to continue going on. You can't just stop. So, you know, we've taken full advantage of the tools that COHA has provided and that has allowed us to integrate a number of our resources. But to get you started, um, let me tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. Um, we are a private for-profit institution. We have had COHA since I think it is 2013. Sound right, Isabel? So, yeah. yeah, okay. Um, we're located in Winter Park. We are a commuter campus. We have no on-campus housing. So all of our students have to travel to us. We also have a large online degree program. I'm just gonna minimize this like little thing. Oh my God, you are the mouse. I'm really bothering you, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. So we have degree programs from the certificate all the way through the masters. So you know, we've got a, a full range. We've got about 50, 55 programs now, um, degrees that we work with. And we have approximately 21,000 21, students and 2,200 faculty. About two thirds of our students are online. We teach in the area of entertainment, media, arts, technology, um, gaming, business. So kind of a, a, the more creative aspects of education. So our students, our students are the creatives. They're the dreamers. They're the artists, the musicians. They're the uh, techies. These are the students who didn't fit in a traditional classroom environment. Um, it didn't. It didn't speak to them. So you know, our, our students are are different. Um, we also have high levels of ADHD. They're under kinesthetic learners. So, you know, there's just a lot going on with them. So, you know, why do we select COHA? Um, our students typically have limited experience with research and library resources. So, ease of access. We have to have a balance between popular materials and academic resources. Our students are going into film, they're going into gaming. So they're not necessarily looking at some of those deep theoretical resources. They need to know how is a novel written and then how is a novel taken and adapted for a game or adapted for film. Um, we have multiple variations of titles and franchises. So think about thing, th Game of Thrones. We have the novels, we have the game, we have the films. We have ancillary resources to support it. So all of that has to be accessible to our students if they're going to be successful. Over 70% of our collection is either media or digital. So our, our print collection is much smaller than most academic institutions. And all of this has to be discoverable. COHA has made that happen for our students through its own ease of use. So let me tell you where we were, March 13th, 2020. I get, we wrapped up one of our major university events. As soon as that wrapped, I have my boss on one phone telling me, we're closing the university, prepare your staff. I have a staff member on the other side calling me saying, I just heard we're closing the university. What are we gonna do? Well, Monday the 15th, University announces complete closure. Staff is going to work remotely. The last time we had been on campus was March 20th, 2020, until this past April. 
So, you know, we were, we were off campus quite a while. We still had to support a community. But by March 27th, so two weeks time, we were fully ready to serve our students through an online environment. <laughs> a lot of concerns. You know, are students going to just close their computer and walk away? Or are they going to continue to engage with their academics? Were we going to have some of that decreased engagement with our instructors? Were people going to be turning to other resources than the library? How much loss of physical materials were we going to have from stuff that wasn't being returned? We had a lot of material that students had checked out, including right there on March 13th. Was it going to come back? Or were we going to have you know, really large volumes of missing material? And then I have a full complement of federal work study students. Typically, we have 11 to 13 that are working with us right here. Library closed, they don't have employment. Were there things that we could do to keep them going? Were we going to be able to retain them? So, some of the things that we did we maxed out our book and material budget to get as much digital resources as we could. Tori had to get them all into our catalog quickly. We reached out to our instructors, to our administrators, to anticipate need. Rather than reacting, we wanted to be proactive in all of this. COHA has a marvelous reporting system, and we're going to hear about that a little in a little while. Um, we used it to assess due dates, to figure out who had what and where it was, and what we had to do to make sure that everybody had access and could get their materials back to us if they wanted. So we turned COHA into a real opportunity for our federal work study students. Because of the ease of use, because of the way you can structure your staff access within the administrative functions, we were able to allow our federal work study students to do remote projects, account cleanup. Um, we had to start adding replacement costs to files. We had some of our students who were um, a little bit more um, detail oriented, help Tori with some of the cataloging. Yeah, it was wonderful. So, you know, we really took advantage of the tools. Um, we also took the time to create and update our instruction materials so that we could be pushing out continual access to our students. So, what did we have available to us? A lot. To support our staff and our, and our administrative side, you know, being able to import our MARC records for other assets. We have O'Reilly Online Learning. We have Swank Digital Campus, which is video streaming. We use Canopy Video Streaming. All of these provide access to MARC records. So we were able to download everything into our COHA system for easy access. The reporting. Um, the due dates and loss to missing items so that we could get a, a handle on our resources. Um, batch updating patron accounts. We had a lot of materials out. We wanted to make sure that those due dates were being updated so that students and, and faculty weren't incurring charges that weren't their fault. The most popular searches function. We were able to identify what our community was looking for and make good collection decisions based on that. I know Isabel uses that pretty frequently to make sure that you know we're keeping up with the demands of our particular community. The communication and messaging, being able to push messages out through our cataloging system, through our patron side, was very beneficial and able to communicate things that were happening in the library and how we could assist our community. And then the quarantine designation. We were able to start shipping materials to our community. When it came back in, we wanted to make sure that it went into a quarantine process so that we could um, get it clean. And that was a way to help us really track 
where our materials were and what was happening with them. <clears throat> we had patron support. So direct linking to our other digital assets through the catalog. So our EBSCO host materials, our, um, all of our ebooks, all of our digital, our magazines. We were able to put in enough information to direct them to those resources. We also were able to um, merge COHA with EDS, um, EBSCO's discovery service. We did that um, in 2017 and it permitted, allowed us to kind of expand the search process for our students. They could search the EBSCO discovery service, find the resources that they needed, not only in the COHA catalog, but in all of our databases as well. So they had a lot of options to do their research when they were doing it remotely. That's some of the other things that we did. Um, Spring Share has a calendaring function. We were able to set up reservation system. Um, this is particularly useful now that we're back to campus so that they could reserve time to pick up materials. They can reserve time to do their printing. They can reserve study space. Then we've been able to build some communication about that into our patron um, communication. And then we have MeScan self-service kiosks from Bintech. Um, now that we're back in the library, students can check out their own materials, which has given them some autonomy in what they're doing. But I think they still like to work with the people instead of the uh, self-service kiosk, which I found interesting. So let me show you a little bit of some of the linking that we've got. So this is one of our cat, Koha catalog records. They have a direct link to our EBSCO host from the record. That has made it possible for our online students to have access to good resources. It's also made it possible for any of our community to find materials when they're away from campus. So we did that with EBSCO. We did that with Swank, Arrival Online Learning. Um, I don't know if we can do it with our LinkedIn learning. Okay. Leave chat loop. I got a new job for you. So all of these tools really helped our students um, access and, and use materials. Back here. Are we back? Yep, we're back. Okay. All right. So there's the EBSCO host, the Swank Digital Campus, um, Flipster, which is digital magazines, and some of the other materials we've been able to link to, which has been really beneficial. Um, like I said, we had the EDS since 2017 and being able to do things like embed our COHA search box within EDS so that people can really expand their research and resources. Um, it also provides us with some additional reporting on how our materials are being used, including statistics for COHA. So when I run my reports, I can see where they're going into all of our resources. It's also just really given them a lot of options for extending their research, which has been a real boon for us um, and students being less familiar with resources. It's given them some easy tools to use. LibGuides, which is another Spring Share product. Um, we've been able to link out to individual items in the Koha catalog. They can see the URL, they can see the call number. They have access to 
a Koha search box again in this particular product. And we've really been able to leverage our resources, um, particularly for the academic support. So for our students, I mentioned that we were looking for work for projects for our work study students. Again, the interface is easy to use. We've been able to get several of them up and running quickly, um, adjusting a little bit of their access so that they have more librarian administrative access than just student access. Um, they've, they've done a lot of cleanup for us. It was really helpful. And we're going to continue that into um, being back on campus. They're going to do a, a lost inventory project for me. Uh, they don't know this yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to have them compare our lost and missing lists to our actual physical inventory to, to try and track some of the things that may have come in and, and just didn't get checked in or, or handled the way we needed them to. Um, they added replacement cost, so working with, you know, Amazon and, and some of the purchasing places and plugging that into the, the uh, Koha record for the individual item. And then just some general cleanup. Um, they've cleaned up some of our patron accounts. They've helped us delete the very old inactive accounts. So it's just given me opportunities to continue to employ my students. So our concerns were actually alleviated. We're very happy and grateful for that. Um, we saw, we originally thought that use of assets was going to go down. It actually increased by 6%. Yeah, I was, I was really surprised. Um, students continued to ask for individual consultations and some of that they were able to do through the messaging systems that we've used. Um, they participated in workshops. So every time I, I offer an online workshop, we can usually count on having a good size group. Um, during the peak of our closure, we were getting 25 and 30 people in a workshop. So that was really, really good. Um, students were continuing and, and making the connections. Um, our instructors continue to invite us to join their classes through Zoom to do a library orientation. And we had a lot of really good staff ease of access so that we could get the job done that has to be done. So we tried to be innovative. We tried to be proactive. Um, it just, it was a tough time, but we learned a lot about what we can do. Um, the strength that the library has on campus. And we're, we're looking forward to continuing with what we've got going on. So questions about what we've done or, or where we're going? We do, we do a lot of canceling yeah. initially. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I would tell you is that I was very selective in which students I gave what products. Um, knowing what their strengths are, my detail orient oriented students um, were perfect for that. They, I think we have a really good relationship with our students. So if there were questions or concerns, they need to ask before moving forward. Um, but you know, the, the, the Koha system is built so that you can do kind of checking. So if I knew that they were working on this section of something, one of us could go back and just double check and kind of spot if there were problems or if things were, were going through properly. Um, luckily, it was just with a small group of students so I didn't have to do tons of oversight. Um, but they're, they're all really good capable students. Uh, and we hope they come to other 
one who's committed to immigration. Can y'all explain a little bit more about the process when it comes to the immigration to the outside resources and the like? We worked very closely with um, our expert team on developing the EDS system. And we told them what we needed and how we, we wanted to go about it. They helped us work the creation of our portal to do that. Um, we have somebody who is dedicated to work with us individually. Um, the same thing when we were doing adding the COHA, we worked between our team at COHA and our team with EPSCO to make sure that everything was, was matching. Um, most of our vendors for our, our research databases and digital assets already provide us with the MARC records. <coughs> so we can download those into COHA, do the cleanup work, and then upload them to our EPS system. This, it was all about working very closely with our, our teams to make sure that everything worked. Um, and pulling in our own university IT team to, to help kind of publishing these guys place that symbol that we did. Just the EDS system itself, what are the so they can also see the EDS results? We, we don't yet. We don't yet. Um, we were just talking with our expert people about that. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we do want to do that. It's just timing. Timing. Yeah. For your uh, student workers, were you able to give them a level of privileges that so that they would know? Yes, yes. Um, the way it's set up, we can pick and choose what we want them to have access to. So if I couldn't do anything with money, but they could clean up accounts. So, you know, like they couldn't wipe out anybody with any files. <laughs> or have them. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So you say the, the range of privileges is really wide, and, or is it kind of more like agency? I, I think it's pretty wide. Um, We've been able to really cherry pick what we can have our students do. Some of them, you know, who are a little more mature and, and have some professional experience, we, we will give more privileges to them, the students who are brand new and, and struggling to find their way. What iOS did you like it How very well. A, a little less flexible for our needs. Let's see, the open source has been tremendous because we have so many different kinds of items in the library. Um, with the cataloging log, you can turn that on and see like what the student actually changed in the record or the record. <coughs> so that could be huge. Said somebody is a little more detail oriented, you can give them extra permissions as well. So it's it is pretty standable. So far, it's been growing quite nicely with our needs. Have you noticed that a lot there's more usage for some of the electronic resources since you brought them on records into the open? Yes. Yes. I've seen tremendous increases in our digital assets overall. And some of that is definitely from being able to access it in, in Coho. Do you use force reserves at all? We don't. We don't. We have a few things that are on reserves. Um, but I'm not sure anybody really remembers that they put something on reserves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's just, it's very minor. And you mentioned your workshops. Were those just how to use the online resources, how to access them now that you've kind of evolved out of that physical material? Yeah, we, we do 
right now we've got two that we do every month. One is just kind of a general online open house. And it's, here's the library, here's what you have. Let me show you a couple of things that you can do with it. The second one that we do every month is um, search, uh, strategies for effective research. And we walk them through using databases, how to search the catalog, how to search the database, how to employ all of the tools that are, are available to them to improve their research process. And we do that one, we're, we're going to go back to doing that one face-to-face -face as well as through Zoom. So it's part of a new student orientation. We're looking at a couple of others to use some of our very specific resources. Um, Nexus Uni, and then we've got something called Hit Songs Deconstructed. So we're, we're looking at various ways to make all of that work for them. Did you do any sort of curbside pickup for the students when you started coming back in? We did. We did. Um, it was used mostly by our instructors, the students less. Um, and they still have the option to use it now if they want to, but I think most people are, are coming in to, to get their resources. Uh, we're seeing about 200 students a day right now in the library. That's, that's not bad. It's not bad. Half of what we had seen prior to closing, but that's good. This is the first month that all of our students have been required to return to campus. So in April, they started coming back slowly. Um, October, November, it was highly encouraged. Now this month, they have to be back. Okay. Lots of changes. You mentioned um, notifications, sending out just all the material that was out there. I always imagine like the refrigerators of everyone's office or like their, their cafeteria, but also the books that are all out in student housing. Did you do personalized notifications outside of COHA or did you use COHA for that? We we used Koha for the initial, um, and we saw stuff come back in, and then using the overdue and the, the lost and missing lists, mm -hmm. I reached out to individuals, mm -hmm. uh, as did did Don and, and my the rest of my team. Just you know, hey, how you doing? Maybe you might want to drop your stuff off. Um, we did offer them FedEx return shipping, so. We are currently missing one, 100 items from the actual closer, closure and about 200 items total. So we're, we're in, in really good shape in terms of overdue and missing items. And some of that students drop, you know, that unfortunately happens. Yeah. Any other things I can share with you? All right, thank you. I'll let you do. <laughs> I think that that will be a good thing. Right. Well, we'll take just a little 10 minute break if you want to get up and walk around. We'll swap out the presentations and then when we come back, we will have Olivia. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the machine back up and see if she has as much DS I'll give her your because I don't want to mess with the computer anymore.